Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Usually I have a rule for investing. The rule goes something like this, that if a company is not a profit making company, then don't invest your money in it. This is a simple rule that I have followed in almost every single circumstance, but I have violated this rule for one particular company that I'm going to speak about on this video. I'm going to explain why is it that I have violated this rule? Why do I think that this particular stock is going to become really big in the coming times and why am I so bullish about this stock despite everything that is going in it. All right, so which stock am I talking about? I will not give you the answer right now because many of you will drop off. Please listen to this video, super, super critical video. It will help you understand more about an evolving technology, one of the fastest growing technology. No, it is not blockchain. It is robotic process automation. I'm going to speak about the technology first, then I'm going to discuss about the stock. Watch it because it will help you understand how to analyze certain technologies, what are some of the levers that you need to keep in mind while making these type of bits. So first and foremost, please take a look at this particular snippet. This is by World Economic Forum and they categorically point to the fact that artificial intelligence and machine learning, these are key trends that are going to disrupt how humans engage with their work. What it simply means is that artificial intelligence and machine learning are evolving concepts. They are shaping the way humans engage in the workforce. These are very, very powerful trends and going forward, a lot of our economy is going to be shaped by these two trends alone. Now, essentially RPA or robotic process automation is an application of these two things. Now, let me very quickly help you understand what RPA actually is. A lot of people think that RPA is basically a bunch of robots that are doing work and are kicking people out and kicking the entire human civilization out. No, that is not the correct understanding of RPA. RPA in simple terms would mean a smart software, right? So it's a smart software that is built on artificial intelligence and machine learning. What are artificial intelligence and machine learning? Let me just give you a very, very high level understanding. Artificial intelligence in simple terms means that machine have the ability to think and evolve with time and with more data that is given to them. Now, how does this happen? Essentially, a lot of data is fed into machines and machines learn, right? So that is what machine learning means that you're giving a bunch of data to machines. They are picking up that data. They learn from those data sets and grow and develop intelligence. In simple terms, this is the crudest way for me to help you simply understand this point. Now, how does this all fit into RPA and what exactly is robotic process automation? Now, let us try to understand this point from an example. So let's imagine that you are an entrepreneur, you run your own bakery and to run that bakery, it's a complex operation. You get a lot of clients every day. People are buying pastries. People are buying a bunch of different, different good, good things from you. So you keep an accountant, right? So this accountant does a lot of work, right? So there are like corporate orders that your bakery is fulfilling. There are retail orders that your bakery is fulfilling. There are certain items that your bakery is selling online. So what does this accountant do? So A, that accountant will be taking care of receipts, right? Receipts, right? That whatever money is coming and going out of your bakery, expenses, receipts, right? That accountant will also take care of building an Excel spreadsheet. He will note down all the expenses and bunch of different, different measures. That accountant will also issue, will also issue a bunch of different documents, right? For example, if there is TDS that is cut, for your employees, if there are certain special deals that need to be sent out to certain corporates. There is a lot of work that needs to be taken care of. This work is very repetitive, right? For example, the mechanics remains the same if you're selling an invoice to a corporate client, right? When the invoice gets issued, then sending them a reminder after 15 days that, hey, please pay the invoice, then checking whether the invoice has been paid and bunch of different systems need to be built. So what does RPA does? RPA simply replaces this particular accountant with a smart software. That is essentially what RPA does. Now, in order to execute RPA, that is very important. You need to understand that an RPA organization undertakes four specific critical tasks. So let me break down this value chain for you. In case you are pressed on time, you can skip this section, move on to the next section. That is completely okay. But understanding this section will help you understand how RPA firms need to operate. So there are four stages or four blocks to the value chain of RPA. The first step is called as planning. The second step is called as development, development. The third is called as deployment, right? And fourth is called as support, right? So these are four steps that an RPA organization needs to undertake in order to make money. 
So let's understand this very, very quickly. So what do each of these four elements or blocks actually mean? So planning simply means that, for example, if I am an entrepreneur and if I hire an RPA organization that is going to automate my workforce, then what do they need to do? They will send a team to my place to understand my business that I'm running a bakery. They will help me understand what type of software I would need and what specific customized software they can give me. So that is the planning stage. So they will give me multiple options that, hey, pick between option A, B, C. These are the type of softwares you can use in case you want to do away with the accountant. Now, once they get an order from me, then they get into the development stage. Now here they have to create something called as data libraries, right? So let me explain this because this is a fairly important concept. So data libraries would simply mean that let's assume that there is an organization which does RPA work. It has done 10 projects, right? Now first 10 projects will take them a lot of effort because they have to design all the systems from scratch. They have to do all the brainstorming from scratch and they have to undertake massive expense in order to execute the first 10 projects. Now the 11th project comes to the firm and the firm realizes that you know what, that I can literally copy paste a lot of work from my third project that I had done. That will save me a lot of time. They are able to do it because they have a data library in place. They have a series of cases that they have built. For example, after revamping my bakery, they can move on and execute exactly the same type of a system for bakery two, three and four. So their cost will come down and having these data libraries solves a lot of issues for these RPA firms. Third comes the deployment stage. Now this is fairly straightforward in a way that there will be some amount of retraining that will happen in case I own a franchise of different bakeries and I'm operating at a pan India level. Then if an RPA firm is coming and reorganizing my business, then I would ask them that, hey, you know what? You are automating my accounting. Great. Just put one person and train that person. So they will help me with the deployment also and the RPA firm will make money. And finally is the support. The software needs to be updated or I need additional support in terms of building peripheral softwares. So all four stages of the RPA are very important and a firm needs to have specialization across each of these four domains. It's not as if that firm can do just one part well and not the other parts well. It is a highly complex business and only a few firms are able to do this work really well. So now comes the question that, hey, which firm are you talking about and why are you so excited about this firm that you are betting on a firm that is not making any profits, okay? So I'm talking about the firm called as UiPath. It's an RPA specialist firm. It has been ranked number one firm in the RPA space since 2018. So it is a big firm. I will share more data around it, but let me comment on why am I bullish about this firm? There are a few key reasons. Reason number one, the potential in the RPA space is massive. The industry has been growing at roughly 30% per year for the last three years and it is forecasted to grow at a similar rate over the coming few years. So the size of the industry will expand. It is one of the fastest growing industries in the world right now. That's point one, fairly obvious that a growth industry is awesome. Number two, there is a tectonic shift that is happening in the employment sector. For example, 2020 COVID unfortunately was a time when a lot of people lost jobs. That was one part of the equation. But if you think about it from business or entrepreneur's point of view, what did they realize? They realized that, you know what, probably we don't need such massive workforce to get our work done. We should look at automization options. And if we can survive on a lean workforce, it can be better for our business. The same scenario played out in terms of kickstarting the work from home economy. A lot of IT firms, for example, realize that, you know what, we don't necessarily need to call people at work. We can just give them work at home and they can work from home. That's a separate discussion altogether that what is the efficiency when people are working from home. But bottom line is that firms are able to offset a lot of their cost and they can cut down on a lot of their cost by adopting these new age measures that have come up post COVID-19 pandemic. Now, just to back this data up, here is a specific data for you. This is from the US Bureau and it shows the business formation statistics that how many new businesses were built in the pandemic. So you can see a clear spike in 2020 that lot more small businesses started to get incorporated. Now, guess what? Even old businesses and the new businesses that are getting registered, they have a very clear understanding that, you know what? We don't need a massive workforce. We will try to optimize and automate as much work as possible from our side because it leads to more cost efficiency in the long term. Now, if you think about it a little bit more structurally from an economics point of view, now I do a lot of macro analysis and one of the key trends that is picking up in the US right now is that high inflation due to more money printing, this has moved into CPI, consumer price index inflation, 
What this means is that the everyday available goods are getting more and more expensive. What does this also mean? This also means that people will clamor for more salaries and there will be a lot of demand, lot of demand in terms of increasing the minimum wages. Now corporations end up taking a lot of it. For example, organizations like Walmart, organizations like McDonald's, they keep getting a lot of heat from regulators all the time and the regulators keep on pushing these organizations that you know what increase minimum wage increase minimum wage every single time now i am not giving you a verdict whether what is right versus wrong but if you think about it from a business point of view they want to move away from this entire discussion by leveraging rpa solutions now the third reason why i feel a company like ui pathway is a winner is very simple that this is a winner take all market this is a study that was done by PwC and the report says there are many preliminary assessments that need to be taken before you deploy your tool that may not be able to support your needs. It's so critical that UiPath Automation Anywhere, this is another company like UiPath and others have developed process discovery tools to aid with the development of automation bots. In simple terms, they are saying that hey, stronger your data library easier it becomes for you to deploy more different type of projects and give more options to your customers. Right now, because of the fact that UiPath has become really big in a very short span of time, they have a lot more data library, that's part A. Part B, if you take a look at the client base of UiPath from last year, they have grown from 6,500 clients to approximately 9,600 corporate clients right now, which is really good. Their retention rate of clients is very high. What does this tell you? This tells you that they are building their data library at a much faster pace. Since I am on the topic of creating monopolies in the RPI space, let me share a couple of more charts with you. Now here is a chart which shows the landscape of the RPI firms in terms of leaders, strong performers, contenders, challengers and you can take a look at this particular graph and you will see that in the leader category there are hardly five firms including Microsoft which is into the RPI space as well and ahead of the pack, ahead of the pack is UiPath a company on which I am also betting. So this is a leader in the space. It is competing with stalwarts like Microsoft, but it has developed its own niche and is creating a massive impact in the RPI industry right now. Now this data has also been validated by Gartner, which has categorized RPI players into different different buckets and domain. Again, you will find UiPath to be a leader in this space. It is ahead of the curve. It is literally the number one firm in the RPA industry. If you are betting on the fact that RPA industry will grow, then you are automatically betting on the fact that UiPath has to grow with it. Now I've shown you a lot of data and research reports. Let me also try to tell you qualitatively as to why UiPath is a solid business. Now I've worked in consulting. I have worked with top tier consulting firms. And again, the model was very similar. That VCG, Bain, McKinsey, these firms used to hire top graduates. They used to bring them on their payroll. Then they used to pick up their resume, sell their profiles of these consultants to their clients and serve those clients. The more work BCG Bain McKinsey organization did, the bigger it became because it had bigger library. They could execute projects faster in a more effective, efficient manner. There was always someone you can speak with within the firm if you wanted help because they would have worked on a similar project. The same situation is playing out at UiPath or any other big RPA firm. So these are some of the reasons why I feel that UiPath is a great firm to have in your portfolio. But having said this, there are certain issues with the firm, but yet those are opportunities. So let me quickly cover those points as well. So let me take you through this article, which says that how fast is UiPath growing? Clearly, if you analyze the data, you will see that the sales have gone up year on year. So let me show that data to you by taking you to Yahoo Financials. And you will clearly see revenues have gone up year after year, but losses have also risen. Now, this is an alarming sign. If you're looking at an innovative product, which has massive industry potential, which is already a market leader, which has a set of clients that are paying massively, this is not bad news at all. Now, this gets somewhat reflected in the retention rate of customers that the customer base has been growing. Now, in order to acquire those customers, they have to spend more money, spend more money in terms of creating those data libraries. That is where major expenses are being undertaken. Part B of the equation is that it's not as if that UiPath will make money only when it has sold the softwares. They will make money in terms of training, upgrading softwares. Bunch of other different revenue streams can be unlocked for them. If they acquire a client, that client becomes a client who keeps on using the services of UiPath perennially till the time their business works. So it's a high cost acquisition business, but you end up creating something called a switching cost for the customer. It's not easy for a customer to switch at all. It is not like Zomato and Swiggy business. For example, if Zomato runs more discount, you switch from Swiggy to Zomato. 
and vice versa. But in UI path, if you are using their software, if you have developed some RPA, if you have incurred so high fixed expenses and have gotten stuck with UI path, you are going to use that piece of software for a long, long period of time. That is where customer acquisition becomes a very important game. And if the company is currently undertaking a loss, there is no reason to be worried from that perspective. Now you might look at the UI paths chart and you might say that Akshat in the last six months, UI path has fallen by approximately 35% in share value. Should I consider it buying now? Should I do it? Should I not do it? That is an analysis that you have to do. I am an investor in it. My simple analysis there is that UI path is a recently listed firm. It's not as if that it has been in operations for the last several years. I've started taking positions in UI path. I'll continue to take more and more positions as the time progresses in UI path. So maybe you can start with a small SIP base or a systematic investment plan in stocks like UI path. I use Vested for making my US stock purchases. You can check the platform. It's a wonderful platform. I am very happy with the platform. Again, please use any platform that you like. I'm just telling you that I'm using Vested. The objective is to buy US stocks, not which specific platform you're using. Now, let me answer one final question on this important video. And then I will close out. The question is that, why do you think something like Microsoft will not gain more traction with time in the RPA? And why is it that UiPath might survive? Do try to give your response, pause the video, try to give the response. It will make this entire conversation more engaging. So here is my answer to that. Number one, RPA is a very specialized niche business. UiPath already has lead in it. That's point one. Microsoft, if it sees a lot of value in this business and if it does not want to compete, all it will do is that it will simply go and acquire UiPath. Even in that circumstance, if you are a shareholder of UiPath, you will see massive returns from your investment. So for that reason, I am very bullish on UiPath. Recently, its revenue numbers have not met the estimates. This was largely due to the fact that due to the COVID problem, businesses are undergoing structural changes. Lot of new things are happening. They are still evaluating options whether to go with RPA, when not to automate. But this is a train that has already left the station. Automation is coming. And the company that is leading the way is UiPath and therefore I'm super bullish about this stock. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and I will see you the next time.